Uh, g'day everybody, uh, welcome to another uh, Revit tutorial by yours truly, uh, Reese Davies from Supernatural Group, uh, Melbourne, Australia. Okay, now I've previously done a series of um, tutorials with a very, very basic intro to Revit using uh, Revit LT 2016. Um, for this next project, I'm going to jump into Revit. 2016 the full version okay because uh, I believe there's going to be a couple of extra tools in there that I'm going to need um, to yeah you know, fully do the stuff we want to do okay but before we even start all that um, one of the key things with um, migrating over to a new piece of software is, is doing things like setting up templates so that you, um, yeah, you've you got some baselines to start with. Okay, so and that's what we're going to do in this um, tutorial is just go through the, the basic process of setting up a, um, a template um, in order to um, yeah, so next time you start a project, you don't have to reload a whole bunch of stuff. So, process is, okay, we go to our big R. So we're going to start a new project, basically. So we're going to go new. New project. Okay. What we're going to do, though, instead of, um, before we click anything here, was instead of saying create a new project, we're going to create a new project template. Okay. We're going to go into our architectural template here in the drop down. I'm going to do a quick browse. I just want to double check that we are defaulting to the, the primary menu. Now, um, I am in the, in the correct place, and there's the default menu that I want um, default ausenu.rte. Okay, an RTE, RTE file in Revit is a template file. Now, this has worked because I've downloaded um, Revit correctly. Um, it is possible if you are new to Revit and you've downloaded it for the first time, is it is entirely possible that you missed the download the library step, and you might not have this. Um, unfortunately, I can't help you much with this tutorial, but if you've got this, then we're in a great place. Okay, so we want this default template to start off with because it's the Australian template and we're in Australia. Um, I'm guessing it will work quite happily with um, other Australian countries as well. So I'm just going to go open. There we go, we've got our template file. It's a project template and I'm going to go OK. OK. <coughs> so the template here looks exactly the same as any other Revit file and it effectively is. I mean the only thing that's changed is that the fact that it is an RTE file. But what we do in here is we set things up to suit ourselves um, a little bit better. Okay so probably one of the very first things I like to set up in a template are my levels. Okay, so I'm assuming that you've got some, some knowledge of Revit now and you're quite comfortable with, say, double clicking on an elevation and, you know, seeing what happens with these levels. So, what I want to do here is that I'm going to just change these levels a little bit and I'm going to add two more levels. Okay, um, actually, no, I won't add the levels, we'll do that during the, the actual build. Okay. But what I want to do here um, is a general rule in um, in Australia. Um, yeah, we deal with um, you know, concrete slabs a lot, and um, you know, common height for um, a waffle slab here is around about 300, 310 millimeters high. So I like my ground floor to be sitting a little bit further up than you know than the normal. The other one I like to do here is I want to rename this level one as um, ceiling level. Uh, my typing is no good today. Ceiling level. Yes, I want to rename the corresponding view so that they appear in the browser. Okay, a little trick here. If I zoom into this side here, we can see um, I've clicked on this level line and we see what's called a temporary dimension. 
Okay, and I can click on that temporary dimension and I can change that to say 2750 and just left click out of that to change it down. So that automatically changes the height there. Okay, so um, the reason that I've chosen 2750, um, 2.7 meter high stud is a very common stud height in Australia now. Um, and I've added 50 millimeters to account for battens, ceiling plaster, uh, and flooring materials. So that if a client asks for 2.7 stud height, they get 2.7 net, not um, you know 2.65 after all the finishes are taken away. So it's um, good architectural practices as far as I'm concerned. Okay, so we've got that little thing there. So that's something we can do straight away. Okay, I'm just going to have a quick look at my ground floor plan. Not much I need to add here. Okay, I've got window schedule, door schedule. One thing I would do, would like to do, is actually load up um, some more windows and doors into this project. Certainly to get started. <coughs> so to get elements into a project, okay, we'll bring in families. We go up to our um, ribbon, okay. We go insert, okay, and we go load family, okay. So this is going to take us into a set of folders, okay, and this is um, or a folder. And I'm just stretching this all out a little bit, okay. And this is the default um, library that. Um, Autodesk provides for the Australian market. Okay, and my understanding is every country has a slightly different version of this based on you know their constructional conventions. Okay, so what I want to do here is I want to load um, a set of doors or a couple of sets of doors, and I've got to load some windows up as well, so that when we go into our project, at least we've got some um, familiarity happening with us for us. So I'm going to go. First, I'm going to go into doors. So I'm going to double click the doors. Oop, double click the doors folder. Okay. Now for the for the untrained, okay, a lot of this may not you may not understand what you're seeing here, but there's a few things that we can look at here. So the first thing I'm going to look for is I'm I'm going to grab this one here, which is an overhead rolling. So that's a garage door. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to so I need to put a garage door into this plan at some stage. Um, I'm going to grab a sliding door. So I'm just going to hold the control key down, left click the sliding door to panel. See we get a little preview there at the top right hand corner. So we can do a multi select. Okay, and da -da -da. and this is the other one I'm the big one I'm after, which is a single timber frame AUS. Okay, and this one by default loads up the 8, 728, 29, 20 doors. So we don't actually have to change the sizes. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to load, just going to go open. What this is does is just loads this into the project. Does nothing else. We, it's, it's there to use. So if I was to say type DR for door in our properties, there it is there. It's ready to be used. Okay. So I'm going to repeat that process. I'm going to now going to go load family. I'm going to go down the bottom there. I'm going to go load windows. Okay. Now in the windows there are a wide range of windows. Okay. But really the ones that are commonly used in Australia are the this awning series. Okay. So an awning 1L is just a, a single awning pane. Uh, a 1LT double pane. So that part there would be fixed, and this is the awning. Got a two LT, which is side by side, and a two LT. So there's some nice windows there. So I'm going to grab. I might just grab the uh, the one L and the one LT. I'm going to grab a little bit further down here. I'm going to grab the fixed one L and the fixed one LT. And you can see there, in, you know, for each file name, it's in brackets AUS, which means it's for our market. Okay. And um, they're, they're fairly ready for us to use. And the other one I want to get, grab is the sliding 2L. 
and the 2LT. Okay, so these are sort of just nice generic sliding or you know windows that are commonly used certainly for um, you know finally built homes in Australia. Okay, so I'm just going to go open again. Okay, so well here it does. What it does is it basically says for each of these families we have a range of different sizes. So all I'm going to do though is I'm just going to pick one of these and go OK. So it's going to load, download that door site, window size, hopefully for each of those families. I'm just going to do a quick check. So WN for Windows. OK, there's my sliding window. So what I've got there, I've got a war, an awning, so I've got some fixed windows there. OK, there are my defaults. Slide. So I've got a, I've got one each of those windows, and that's all I need for now. Okay, because we when we go into the project, well, I'll show you how to change window sizes, etc. Okay, I'm going to go load family one more time. Um, we're going to plumbing. We're going to architectural fixtures, um, water closets, toilets. Okay, there's a domestic toilet. We're going to need one of those. And load that toilet in. Okay. To set up a, a true template takes hours. Um, on the first cut alone, we don't have that luxury with YouTube. So this is the basic process. Um, in addition to you know the template. You know, we could be modifying or importing different um, elevation markers, section markers, um, etc., to suit the the architectural standards of your office or how you want to do things. Um, for these tutorials, we're going to stick to the out of the box elements for that side of things until we get into much more in depth, um, you know, projects or tutorials. Okay, so but the process is yes, you go load family, update things, grab what you want, and go from there. Um, so there was the family loading. I'm going to my sheets here. I'm going to go say right click. Um, previous tutorial we were talking about adding sheets and printing, so I want to go new sheet. Um, I don't want the A0 metric. I want to grab an A3, so I go load back into the library. Okay, title box, there's the A3 metric uh, light, uh, temp, uh, title block, go open, there it is here, go OK. So I can go right click and I can delete that one there. Okay, so we've got something to start with, okay. So this means now we've, we've got a template with a few things loaded, so the next time you start a project you can use this one. You don't have to at least do, you know, you've done some of the work already. So now the process is to save this file. So I'm just going to go into the big R here. File. Save as. Okay. It's opened up as a template and it will only let us save as a template at the stage. We've got a library thing here, but let's not worry about that. So we just want to save this template. Okay. And we're going to st stick to this folder. It's the default folder for now. Okay, but let's just call this uh, YouTube template for argument's sake. Now, when you're saving files in Revit, okay, so you your file names, you've got the types of file, and you've got some options here. Okay, so let's have a quick look in here. Okay, so thumbnail preview, yada yada yada. Up here, maximum number of backups. Okay, and they've given this a this horrific number of 20. Okay, now these backup for Revit automatically backs up. Okay, that's the drill. Okay, so but every quarter of an hour, boom, there's a there's a te there's a backup of your work. So um, at worst, you generally only lose about 15, 20 minutes if you get a you know if you get a crash or anything like that. Um, but really, we don't want 20. Uh, Backups. I mean, if you're working with a hundred megabyte file and you've got twenty backups there, you're going to be chewing through your space pretty fast. Okay, 
I usually run with about three backups. That gives me an hour of backup data, um, which I think is fairly reasonable. Um, you know, it doesn't take up too much space. So three backups, go OK, and we'll just go save. Done. OK, what we'll do, we're going to call it quits there. Upload this to YouTube. And um, next project, we're going to uh, open up the brand new project. We're going to use this template um, to get cracking on, um, you know, a, a bona fide project. So we will see you then.